It took me a f***ing week, I cannot figure this out. I might just be not intelligent enough for this kind of shit. Downloaded five different libraries to try on different things. It worked on my Mac, it didn't, didn't work on my PC. It didn't work on my Mac, didn't work on my PC, and I didn't know what was happening. It's still the exact same shit. It's just the law of cosines with some extra steps. But that tiny, tiny victory is what allows me to not have depression. Pythagorean, Pyth... Oh my god. Smudged with a lot of stuff, maybe egg yolks in there. Fucked with my brain so hard that I did even question my own engineering education. Hello everyone, welcome to this part 9 of me working on a 3D printed 2D pen plotter robot. I am building this all from scratch, conceptualizing the software, electrical and mechanical engineering of the robot. The goal of these videos is to show the progress, spark fights and arguments in the comments down below, and keeping me accountable for me to continue to work on this amazing project. So, if you do not want to miss my next mental breakdown, I would highly suggest you to subscribe and watch the previous videos to get caught up to speed. Alright, alright, alright. So, what is new this week? Two things, essentially some PCB design things, and some math stuff. The second part is definitely funny, I will explain you why, but first of all, let's talk PCBs. As I told you in the last video, I will be using KiCad. KiCad is apparently a pretty well-known software, fully open source, meaning absolutely free. Again, we do love some free stuff. And uh, I thought it was gonna be a very plug and play experience. Was that the case? Uh, no. I did do some PCB design in the past using something called Easy EDA, which is an online solution for these things. And uh, recalling Easy EDA, it's in the name, it was pretty easy. It was in two parts, making first the schematics, doing all of the branching of different components together, and then essentially assembled the footprints, and then make a Gerber file, and then send all of that to a PCB manufacturer. KiCad, from the different tutorials I watched, it's kind of the same. The thing is though, the library, meaning this place right there where you have all of the different components, for example, all your different microprocessors, traces and all of that, was not complete with everything I needed and was missing, for example, the through holes and footprints on my ESP32. And so this is where this website I discover comes in, Snapmagic or SnapEDA. And this is an online solution with essentially everything you might need to build your PCB design. I did find my ESP32 and it was supposed to be as easy as just implementing this library into KiCad. It took me a fucking week, alright? A fucking a week. Not understanding what happened. I had the symbols and I had the footprint that I only had the footprint, didn't have the symbols. Downloaded five different libraries to try on different things. It worked on my Mac, it didn't, didn't work on my PC. It didn't work on my Mac, didn't work on my PC, I didn't know what was happening. Until, boom. And it's finally here. So yeah, now I think I finally understand how libraries work in KiCad. Is it ridiculous progress? Yes, it is. But that tiny, tiny victory is what allows me to not have depression. So I would say that's still a win. So yeah, there you go. PCB design parts. There we go. We have libraries working. Jesus Christ. But now let's talk about math for a second. In a previous video, we talked about the math behind the robot and how it would essentially work. So let's say you would like the pen to go from this point to that point, passing in x and y coordinates, and with that input data, you would have motor's position at the end. And we wrote this algorithm pretending that the end effector, aka the pen, this is robotics jargon, just me pretending that I know what I'm doing, as always, imposter syndrome is a thing. <clears throat> Sorry, we pretended that the end effector was at the cross section of the two arms, which, apart from making it impossible to place the pen there, it's not impossible, it's just very not easy, makes the math stupidly simple. I would highly suggest you to watch the devlog where I explain the math behind this, but essentially it's just a couple of right angle triangles, and it makes it very easy to understand what the angle should be. Problem is, reality is that that the pen would be offsetted from that position that I thought it was going to be in. So yeah, let's imagine this is the robot, so this is the top view, this is one joint, this is another joint, and this is where I thought the pen was going to be. But no, with the last iteration, the pen would actually be offsetted from there. So let me just draw the top arm right there. So it would just be this, boom, 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 and we just have a simple arm coming off of the top arm right there, and this is what the pen actually is. And so this entire part right there of the arm, this is fixed. The only thing that changed is that tiny little offset with this angle that we obviously know. And so this shouldn't make the math that much more complicated. Shouldn't, right? See it? Yeah. That tiny arm fucked with my brain so hard that I did even question my own engineering education. In the past, just watching this, again, these were just a bunch of right angle triangles. You do a little bit of Pythagorean, Pythagorean, oh my 
god we don't know how to pronounce this in english correctly so the right angle math that you do in high school there you go just do a bunch of shit like that and you should be okay to get the math but here since we have this new offset how the hell do we even do that and i wasn't sure where to look for it until i had this magic sentence from one of my colleagues all right this is what we have but let me just start back from scratch so to remind you the math of how we made it work last time, so this is the top view of the robot, this is our two joints, J1 and J2, the length of one arm is the same absolutely everywhere, and this is our end effector. And based on an X and Y coordinate that we give, we want to compute theta1 and theta2 of our two motors that are right there. Because I remind you, so like this is the top view, the side view looks something a little bit like this. So yeah, from the side, this is what it looks like. So this would be theta1 and theta2. These are the two angles that we are looking for. And so the way we decompose this problem is first, First of all, we try to find the angle that we need for just a distance, and then we just add what the angle offset should be. So for example, we would like to go to a position of 5, 3, I want the position of the send effector. So to that, we just want to take that distance, how far is the point from the origin that is right there, and then according to the angle of that point, like where is it according to the zero origin, we just change the angle of the entire infrastructure. And so as you can imagine, these all being the same length. It's not really hard to understand that this is a right angle right there and the angle that is right there is going to be the same as this one. And so if we know that this length is half of that distance that we know, it's pretty easy to get that angle. And so this problem decomposition just makes a lot of sense. And for that new lever that is added, so this new offset right there, the only thing that changes is how do we get the angle from that distance that we talked about? Because the entire angle of the infrastructure, this is just going to be the same. As long as we get the angle based of the distance, then the rest is just the offset that we just did like that. So if we take back the problem to its bare bones elements, this is what we have. There you go. So this only represents the top arm with the little offset of the end effector. Beta right there doesn't move. And we know this. We know this length here that is the same here and here. And we know we are going to call this a lever. We know the length of this lever right there. So the new thing is just this, right? Based of this distance right there, like where is EF positioned according to the zero right there, what is the angle of that? That should be pretty easy, right? I thought about that, like I sat down at a desk and I was like, I cannot figure this out. I might just be not intelligent enough for this kind of shit. And like, I found a way to have a two angle equation because I was like, okay, if you know the distance, like I know how to compute this because this is what we had before, because like, if I know this and then I know that, and then the angle, I can get it this, but no, like if the angle, I wouldn't be able to then to get this because this actually moves according to this angle. And I was super lost, turbo lost on this project. And so I asked around, I have the luck to have some pretty talented engineers at my company and I just made a little post and sent it. And, uh, what I got back, the thing that unlocked me right away, was not an answer, it was a question. The question was this, they were like, so we agree that this is of length L and this is of length L2. We know L and L2, right? I said, yeah. And they said, so this angle, this is fixed. So we also know this, right? I said, yeah. And they're like, so essentially we know this distance, right? Which we are going to call GEF, Jeff. We're going to call it Jeff. There you go. And I was like, I guess. And this unlocked everything. Because if we know Jeff, we know this length, we know that length and EF, that distance, right? There. This is just what we gave in the beginning. So we just have another triangle. And if we have a simple triangle right there with all of its known length what can we get this bite boy right there and it is that easy and so the same way how we can get the length of jeff and that angle right there is just using this good old law of cosines for example to get jeff l2 square minus 2 l l2 cosine of beta and we have our jeff and now that we have jeff how do we get this our good old theta one. Well, we use, you understood it, the good old law of cosines. So you take the cos, you put it on the other side, and you do this, that, whatever, you end up with a good old r cos, L square, plus the distance of EF according to zero. So this would be knowing that, again, EF is a 2D coordinates point, the position X of EF minus J square. Oh yeah, this is square also. And under there, 2 L EF of X. And boom. And this is the simple shiz right there. So this is for theta one. So yeah, this is what unlocked everything. So, but now we do have the second arm, right? That we also need to take care of. That would look something a little bit like this. This is obviously not into proportions. Boom, this would be J2. And this again is L and F. But yeah, we need that second thing right there. And this again is still the exact same shit. It's just the law of cosines with some extra steps. This complicated shape right there, we can just divide it like this. So theta two is just that plus that. How do I know that one? Very easy. Do I know this? Yes. Do I know that? 
Yes. Do I know this length? No, I don't. What else do I know? And you just go like that. You just suppress everything, so on and so forth. And so we end up back to this. And as you can see right there, this is just trigonometry. Um, let me actually put it to you like this. So if some of you freaks want to take the time to actually read this, I'm uh, pretty sure this is not really readable for some people because of my pretty poor writing and this is smudged with a lot of stuff, maybe egg yolks in there. Jesus Christ. But yeah, that's just it. Good old trigonometry. So this is all theoretical. I found that out this morning and uh, I do need to make a little bit of an implementation. I remember doing it in processing for the first version of the kinematics that we had. But uh, yeah, this is pretty basic stuff with some amount of trigonometry. I will give you that. With a good old amount of variables. I have to give you that. Like I can fuck up somewhere and I for sure did. This is not going to work on first try. I don't think so knowing myself. But uh, yeah, that is it. This is what we have. <sighs> All right, this is it for this update. Very happy to still see that I'm learning some stuff on this. Apart from keycard installing the fucking library. Jesus Christ. But progress is still progress and progress feels good. If you enjoyed this video, please do not hesitate to share, like, subscribe and do everything you want to stimulate the YouTube algorithm. If you have any idea of how I could have done those math better, please put them in the comments down below. I know there are plenty of different solutions to do this kind of mathematics. And I also know that you like to give your opinion. So shoot do your thing. I think that's it for me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I see you soon on the internet. Bye bye everyone.